Now, today's applications are increasingly complicated, requiring vision systems that can explore the world for robots so that they understand how big things are and where things are located. Today, we're talking to analog devices at Embedded World to find out about time of flight cameras. And I'm going to talk to Tony. So hi there, Tony. Really nice to see you here at the Analog Devices Stand Embedded World 2022. I bet you're really excited to show us what's happening here and what's new for, uh, that you've been working on while uh, Corona's been happening. Yes, absolutely. So we're here, we've, uh, we've got a demo of our 3D uh, high resolution time of flight solution. We're introducing our depth camera. Basically, it's a module that does indirect time of flight. It's the first and only uh, megapixel sensor that's on the market. And with that high resolution and accuracy that we offer, it enables us to get into the metaverse applications, ranging from industrial, factory automation applications, right through to augmented and virtual reality. So it enables a lot of applications for 3D rendering. It sounds really exciting, but I guess there's probably some people that aren't quite clear on the time of flight principle. So right. what does time of flight mean and, and how is it translated into information? It's exactly what it says on the box. It's basically the time of flight that it takes for a photon of light to travel from the source, which is a laser, an infrared laser, to an object, gets reflected from the object and received onto the sensor. So that distance, uh, we use indirect time of flight, uh, and that we take that phase information, that's why it's indirect, rather than the actual time it takes to calculate the depth of each pixel as it gets returned from the object. So from there, we can build a depth map and create a 3D rendering of the object that's being uh, imaged. And so what sort of applications benefit from this type of time of flight technology? Yeah, so there's many applications have from industrial machine vision, so for factory automation where you're trying to control robots to make them less uh, controlled but more autonomous in their, act in their actions, uh, to logistics where you're trying to dim dimension things. So being able to create accurate um, renderings of objects, you can basically then calculate the size of freight that you need to, to use in terms of to carry those objects so it saves money and time and efficiency throughout the whole system. Then from there, we also we go into the virtual reality world right. for VR and AR headsets where you need high accuracy in order to be able to image your world. So there's a, what sort of accuracies can you achieve with this technology? So with our uh, megapixel solution, we can get down to plus or minus three millimeters of accuracy over wow. a range of 10 centimeters right up to four meters. So Incredible. it's very high accuracy, very good for, as I said, rendering 3D images. And when you're implementing this in a, in a real application, is it enough just to have one sensor, or is it the type of thing where you need several in order to, to get a really good yeah. overview of a, an object? It kind of depends on the application. But one of the good things about our solution is, because it's mobile, you can, in some cases, move the camera around and take multiple images, and then create a stitched image from that. So, if you think about a logistics application where today you have fixed cameras to do an images where you might have four and then you have to move the object to the, uh, to the location of the camera, yeah. with this technology you can take the camera to the object, take multiple images with one camera and create a rendering of that object. So some applications require more images, but generally you can, you can get away with one. In machine vision and in uh, autonomous mobile robots, you may need three or four cameras yeah. in order to get the view, the field of view that you're interested in. Now I've heard similar applications using time of flight and they take lots of images and there's lots of processing, lots of machine yeah. learning algorithm to stitch yeah. them all together. It sounds very complicated. Is that the it case is, with this is. type of uh, well, camera as well? Our camera, our solution removes all that complex complexity. Because uh, in a, today with the lower resolution time of flight solutions, you have to use an RGB high resolution camera to upsample the image and then do a lot of post-processing and machine learning in order to recreate that, that depth. With a megapixel sensor, you remove all of that complexity. So we give you, you don't need an RGB camera, you can just take the image from our sensor and do that rendering much more efficiently. Now, one of the big challenges of being a journalist at an event like Embedded World, there's only one of me. Can you 3D image me? Maybe we can make another one. Oh. <laughs> Well, if your viewers would like you to be a 3D image, then we can do a 3D image of you, no Super. problem. Let's take a look and see how that works. Perfect. It's pretty exciting. I've never been replicated before. So. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> there I am on the screen. Um, I look slightly bumpier than usual, but that is very impressive. 
And you've even got my hair perfectly as well. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Super. So I'm going to click on send here. There you go. Ah. You can see me from all dimensions. I've never seen my back before either. <laughs> So, Tony, that's an incredible experience, right. sitting there being imaged for the first time. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to send him out on the road in, in my place. It doesn't look quite as handsome as I remember looking at myself this morning in the mirror. But it's fantastic technology. Thanks for taking Thank the time you. today to talk us through time of flight. And we wish you a great time here at Embedded World. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.